Welcome back. And it looks like W5 is the only place on television this week where you're going to be able to watch the incredible Fred Van Vliet. Because the star point guard of the Toronto Raptors has an injured thumb, and it's probably going to be a few weeks now before he's back on the basketball court. So his timeout is as good a time as any to consider Van Vliet's courageous and inspiring life story. As W5's Peter Ackman reveals, his rise to the top has not come easily. Standing just six feet tall, Fred Van Vliet is quickly becoming a giant of the NBA. But despite his star status and multi-million dollar contract, he's never forgotten where and what he came from. Echoing through this downtown Toronto basketball court are the excited screams of dozens of underprivileged kids and the pounding sound of basketballs. They're getting the chance of a lifetime, running basketball drills and an up-close look at the Raptors point guard. There you go, almost, almost, almost. I never got a chance to meet like an NBA player or, or a professional player until I was much older. So I always keep that in mind when I'm interacting with kids, you know, um, who watch us on TV and... Despite a hectic schedule playing NBA games night after night, Fred has dedicated some of his limited time, giving those in need a hand up. Fred says he does it because he knows exactly how they feel. I was always kind of the underdog and on the outside, and I never got on in the big boy club and, and the, the, the good boy clubs. Do people underestimate you when they meet you? Yeah, probably. I don't really care what people think about me as a, as a basketball player. Fred Van Vliet isn't the most skilled player in the pros or even the fastest, but what he does possess is an innate talent, a rare basketball IQ. Well, that's why I love him. He's a coach's delight. He's a thoughtful player who's got a great fundamental base in his game. Since breaking into the NBA, Fred has established himself as a team leader, earning respect on and off the court. But Fred's path to the NBA was anything but easy lined with setbacks, embarrassment, and even heartbreak. And it all started here in Rockford, Illinois, about 150 kilometers west of Chicago, one of the most dangerous cities in America. For decades, it was mired in double-digit unemployment and poverty, which led to rampant gangs, drugs, and violence. For the first 18 years of my life, um, the sole motivating factor was to not want to be like the other people around, not, not want to be one of those stories because that's all we ever heard growing up. Frederick Edmund Van Vliet was born in 1994 to a white mother and a black father, the youngest of two boys. They lived here in this inner city Rockford home. His father, Fred Manning, was a talented but troubled local basketball player. When Fred was just five years old, his life and his family were shattered. When his father was murdered, shot to death on the streets of Rockford in a drug deal gone wrong. It was a, it was a devastating blow to us. I mean, who wants to tell their kid that their parent is dead, you know? Susan, Fred's mother, remembers the shockwaves the murder had on her young family, forever changing their trajectory. How do you explain that to a five-year-old? You don't. I mean, you just, you tell them, and then they process it as time goes by. Because even though you say it, and you think they understand it, three days, four days go by, and they're waiting for them to come home. Like, OK, where are they? Like, where did they go? When are they coming back? What do you mean? Like, they, they just don't understand it. Yeah. Just for me, remembering it the way I remember it was I felt like I was just taking this really long nap. Like, I felt like I slept for days on end. and. You know, I, I slept for, let's just say, 12 hours, right? And I, I wake up and uh, we're at my grandparents' house and I go to the basement and, you know, mom and grandparents and my brother, everybody's down there crying. And I just, I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't, I was trying to understand why. And then they told me, you know, that my dad was never coming back. Were you scared for your kids when that happened? Absolutely, absolutely. I knew that 
Everything depended on me, and even though I had a support system, at the end of the day, it was all me, and I knew that in our community, there's still a lot of racism. So I couldn't raise two black men alone. Yeah. Period. You're scared so, about that. Yeah. I didn't want them to become a statistic. To do that and to provide for her kids, Susan worked multiple jobs, but she knew she couldn't do it alone. She needed help raising her boys and keeping them out of trouble. Then I met Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and I made him do it. <laughs> Literally. Joe is a blessing. He yeah. arrived at the right time for you. Yep. And I believe that I'm Joe's blessing because I helped soften his edge. Yeah. Joe Danforth was a single dad of two young children and a Rockford City police officer. Without hesitation, he stepped in to help and guide both Fred and his brother Darnell. You're in a, in a city that's rough. Yeah. You're in a neighborhood that's yeah, rough. Yeah, it was rough, yeah. How do you keep everyone out of trouble? I mean, you know, we get up in the morning, I get off a shift and we get up and we get to the gym, we get out to the YMCA. Uh, man, you can see us run around and get shots up and then do that in the course of a, probably like an hour and a half and get back and get ready for school, you know? Did Fred like getting up that early? No. Did any kid like getting up no. that early? No, no. But you did it. We they had no choice. Yeah. But it's tough love, right? Yeah. Because you were doing that to, to save them. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, wanted to make them, you know, give them direction, man, and you know, make them successful. I hated him. I hated him from the day I met him, um, you know, for a very long time. It was, bed checks and you know uh, room checks and making sure your room was clean and doing dishes and vacuuming and it was almost going to boot camp you know like at overnight and uh, she invited the law into the house for literally. Sure, literally and as a 10 year old kid you don't care about your mom's love and you don't care if she's happy with her relationship you don't even understand that at that point right you're just like you know how dare you choose this man over us despite the pushback joe and susan stuck to their game plan do whatever it takes to keep Fred and the rest of their children off the streets. Rockford is uh, a rough place, to say yeah. the least. Yeah. What was around the Van Vliet brothers when they were, you guys were trying to get out of there? Yeah. When I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, girls started getting pregnant and stuff like that. There was fights every day. Uh, a friend of mine was, you know, brought guns to school and he would show us and, and stuff like that. And uh, it really got real for me right before I went to high school, the summer going into ninth grade was one of our friends um, was shot and killed. Hoping to get as far away from that life as possible, in grade nine, Fred joined the Auburn High School varsity basketball team. Immediately, it was clear he was unlike any other player. Brian Ott was his coach. Is it overstating it to say this is the house that Fred Van Vliet built? I don't think that's overstating it. That, that whole return of the program to prominence, certainly um, Fred was the biggest single actor in that. With Fred leading the way, the boys' basketball program hit its peak. In his senior year, they won 22 straight games, propelling them to the semifinals of the Illinois State High School Championships for the first time since 1975. Fred smashed nearly every individual record. Did you see anything like that before or anything uh, after? No, uh, no on both counts. I mean, his scoring is um, the all-time leading scorer in Rockford public school history. So not just Auburn High School, but there's four public high schools here in town. What does that mean to the kids that you coach now? There's nothing out of this world in terms of Fred's physical stature and appearance, right? There's nothing superhuman there to look at for them. I think that makes it feel possible. It makes it feel real that somebody can, uh, from here, can accomplish those things. Despite his record-setting high school career, when it came time to go to university, not one school in his home state of Illinois made him an offer. I think they thought he's too small a stature, he's not quite quick enough, whatever, not athletic enough. All perceived shortcomings, Fred has heard over and over again. Did that hurt? Uh, Do you take that personally? Yeah, I always took it personal, and, and it's probably the way that I still am that way to this day, is just having that chip on my shoulder and um, understanding that 
the self-doubt comes in, right? Because you're doing everything right, you're winning. I wasn't chasing any of those schools. If they don't want me, you know, I'll go find somebody that does. The only real interest in Fred came from Wichita State. Hardly known as a basketball powerhouse, the team had only qualified for the U.S. University Championship Tournament once in the last 24 seasons. But when Fred joined the team in 2012, all that would change. It's Fred Van Fleet with a spectacular move off the dribble. Quieting the naysayers who passed him over, Fred was instrumental in Wichita's success. In 2013, he helped carry the team to a first ever perfect regular season, 35 straight victories, transforming a losing program into a basketball powerhouse. You had the perfect season in, at Wichita, and did that give you a vision towards what you could do next? Um, by sophomore year, I started thinking, okay, this is a real thing and uh, you know, professional aspirations come around and you start to learn and you try to work a little bit harder each year and become a better player and keep going out there and performing and, and let the rest of the stuff take, take care of itself. I tell you, Fred Van Vliet, he is the heart and soul of this team. That hard work paying off, Fred was named Conference Player of the Year twice. University level accomplishments Fred had assumed would translate into a selection in the 2016 NBA Draft. So in anticipation of the big payday, Fred footed the bill for a celebration party at a bar in Rockford for 150 family and friends and waited for the call. But when it came, it wasn't the fairy tale ending he had been waiting for. Determined to be discovered. He wasn't done. He wasn't done playing. And a chance at the big game. Welcome to the 2016 NBA Draft. When W5 continues. Good evening, and welcome to the 2016 NBA Draft. At Surrounded by his entire family and dozens of friends, June 23rd, 2016 was supposed to be the day Fred Van Vliet's dreams came true. They'd all turned up to watch the NBA Draft, welcome expecting at any moment to hear Fred's name called. But one by one, the dreams of 60 other basketball players came true. When Fred's cell phone finally rang, his agent had devastating news. Every NBA team had passed him over. It's dumb as f It's just hard to sit here with a room full of 150 people and not get picked. Still reeling, Fred faced his crowd of supporters. I was so disappointed, but I just want to thank everybody for coming out. I've been against the odds my whole life. Now, so. now that draft party, does that give you nightmares still? At the time, I was I was pissed off and I was uh, upset and I was disappointed and you know I was sad and and all of those things and I was embarrassed. It was also a major blow to Fred's mother and stepfather. So did your heart break a bit when? Of course, your I baby... mean, yeah, of course it did, but I just knew that his journey wasn't over. He wasn't done. He wasn't done playing. He was going to make it, and he just needed somebody to give him a chance. One team did. The Toronto Raptors offered him a spot on their minor league development team. After everything, the letdown and, and people went away, it was just it was time to get back to work, and we got back to the drawing board, and um, obviously we got in contact with the Raptors that the summer league was what we were going to do. Fred begrudgingly took Toronto's offer, and once again, the underdog had to prove himself because in the minors, there are no guarantees of ever getting called up. Did you feel like you shouldn't have to go to development league? 100%. I was ready to play when I was going to the D League. I was already good enough and, and ready, experienced enough and ready to play, but the opportunity just wasn't there. Fred had to make a choice, feel sorry for himself and give up or keep fighting. So as he'd done over and over again, Fred ignored the critics and overcame the setbacks. During his first full season in the minors, he led the team to its first development league championship, making it impossible for the big club to pass him over again. Tell me about that first time you got called up to the Raptors. You walk onto an NBA court. It's real. Yeah, it's just... Uh incredible moment for me and my family and just the journey and what it took to get to that point. 
But making the NBA didn't mean Fred was instantly going to be a star. Most nights he sat on the bench, usually only playing sporadically as a substitute. Wanting more, Fred spent hours studying the game. Is that where S Steady Freddy came from? The level-headed, smart basketball knowledge? Yeah, just being even-keeled and level-headed is, is kind of where that was born out of, and that's something that I've had, you know, for the majority of my life and, and kind of comes from my life experiences. Fred made the best of the playing time he got. Raptors head coach Nick Nurse quickly recognized and one of the best substitutes in the league. He flies under the radar, but what does he do to your team? Like you said, he's been kind of the uh, unnoticed underdog for a long time. He's not very big, he's not very fast, uh, but he can play, man. And he is winning spirit, his winning attitude, his work ethic, um, his IQ, all those things are contagious and, and really help our team. Once undrafted and unwanted, the kid from Rockford who spent his life beating the odds did it again in the summer of 2018. To Fred and his family, um, congratulations. This is awesome. Uh, we're proud of him. When the Raptors signed Fred to a two-year deal worth $18 million. A dream come true for the Rockford, Illinois point guard, who grew up in one of America's most dangerous cities. Is it overstating it to say that basketball saved your life? I mean, I think I think you could say that. I think that uh, it's a huge key. Whether I was playing basketball or not, I always felt like I would be successful, but um, basketball was the thing to, to get me out of the environment that I was in. Getting out of Rockford was only made possible with help from his stepfather. While for years Fred resented Joe, he now credits him for making the pros. So what place does he have in your career? Huge, 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 huge part of... Uh, I gave him credit a long time ago for um, the workouts and the work ethic, but uh, more so than anything, just I learned a lot what not to do, what to do, like watching him um, as a man, you know, after losing my dad. Now I have this real, you know, big, strong alpha male in our house and, and just watching him and watching, you know, how he conducted himself every day obviously shaped me. Fred's journey came full circle. November 17, 2018, the Raptors taking on the Bulls in Chicago. Just over an hour away from where he grew up, Fred in the starting lineup for the first time in his career. Of course, his family, friends, and supporters showed up in droves, 300 strong, most of whom had been by his side during the worst moments of his life. Two of the proudest among them, Fred's brothers, Darnell and JD. Did you ever imagine that you'd be in this arena cheering on somebody with your name? No, it's amazing. definitely surreal, but we always knew this was going to happen. I mean, a lot of people take that as like cockiness, but for us, it was just our work, work ethic. Nervous but excited for his opportunity, Fred stayed focused and away from his fans, all except for one. After a good luck kiss from his 10-month-old daughter, Sinai, it was game time. Red turns, fires, switch. And just as he had done repeatedly on the playgrounds of Rockford during his high school games in university and the D-League, Fred rose to the occasion. Three times, man, please. Nice. Scoring 18 points, leading all players in the game. I know Chicago's not your hometown, but it's pretty darn yeah. close. Did this feel like a home game tonight? Yeah, it's as close as I'll get, man. And uh, it's a special place to play. After the game, a reunion of sorts. Fred took a few minutes to see his family and friends, moments he cherishes. Everybody get in, man. Yeah, jump in. Oh, man. Especially during the grueling six-month NBA regular season. It's just so good to see family, and you know, you never want to take that for granted as we're on this journey and being busy every day and traveling across the world. Um, it's always good to reflect and, and to regroup and bring it back to home. No matter how far his dreams take him, Fred still makes time to give back. Here in his adopted hometown, he makes regular visits to the Toronto Sick Kids Hospital and even helps the foundation raise money. At this charity breakfast, he's inspiring the next generation of young entrepreneurs. My perspective on life is just a little different just because of how I grew up and where I come from. The more time you worry about failing, you're probably gonna fail you know, versus just going into it confident 
and you know, believe in whatever that case may be and, and see what happens. Nearly two decades after losing his own father, Fred is still working to stay positive. <laughs> and fighting every day for his family. Mm. Oh, now you are. What's happened to you maturity-wise since becoming a dad? I've grown a lot, I've grown a lot. A um, lot less sleep, obviously. Um, a lot more patience, um, a lot softer. Just, you know, like you said, when I'm around her, I'm a completely different person. and. Um, it just puts things in perspective and gives you a different outlook on life. New challenges and dreams Fred is ready to face thanks to the backing of those who love him and the memory of his murdered father forever in his heart. You hold that with you every day? Yeah, every day. Every day I wake up, every day I go to bed. Um, I say a prayer, you know, prayer a couple times a day. You know, everything happens for a reason and, and maybe that was the reason why I am where I am today. Well, you may have noticed that Fred's fiance Shantai is expecting. They're due in May, right when the Raptors hope to be in the middle of the NBA playoffs.